Hi guys, today I've got a masterclass video for you and this one is all about how to create the perfect cutouts in Photoshop. And I'm gonna start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is James and if it is the very first time to this channel and you wanna learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related. Start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So in this video guys is my masterclass tutorial all about how to create the perfect cutouts in Photoshop and I'm going to be showing you four different tools and multiple different techniques and effects to get the most out of Photoshop when you're planning on creating cutouts. So if you'd like to have a look at any of the pre-selected photos that I find work really well with this effect, and it'll be the same photos that I'm going to be using in this tutorial, then go ahead to the link in the description. So before we get started, just talking about the different tools, I just wanted to talk about the two different ways of creating transparent pixels in Photoshop. So the first way is by using the eraser tool. Now the eraser tool is a destructive way of removing or creating transparent pixels in Photoshop. So you would go ahead and select a eraser tool and what you can do is you just hover over by clicking and then you can delete certain pixels in a photo and this will create a transparent background. But what I mean by destructive is there's no way of retrieving the information or the pixels after you've deleted them. So let's say you've deleted the background and you're quite happy with it and then you create a bunch of color grading techniques but then you realize you've actually missed a section and you've gone over a bit that you weren't meant to you're not going to be able to retrieve those pixels or information after you've made the changes so it's not a great way especially if you're quite new to photoshop my preferred way of creating trans pixels is by using a layer mask now a layer mask is a kind of a sub layer within a layer that allows you to create transparent pixels. Now what you'll do is you'll click on the layer mask, you would uh, add it to the layer of your choice and it comes up with a white square. Now that white square is the layer mask. Now you can either paint black onto it or paint shades of grey and what it will do is it will create a transparent background. And this is the perfect way because what it will do is it will allow you to revert back to the original photo really easily simply by just changing your foreground and background color from white to black which is a perfect way especially if you're new to photoshop but i still use a layer mask as i find is is, is my preferred way just in case you do make any mistakes because it doesn't matter how expert you are i often make quite a few mistakes in photoshop so i often like to revert back and even just my mikey minor tweaks after the fact is really really handy so if you are new to photoshop i'd probably recommend using the layer mask tool way instead of using the eraser tool but it is again completely up to personal preference so without out the way let's talk about the brush tool so using the brush tool is probably one of the most customizable ways of creating cutouts in Photoshop now today I'm going to be using this photo and again I got it from unsplash.com and the link will be in the description and it'll be called photo one so what I want to do to this particular photo is just simply remove the background and we can do this easily just by using a layer mask and using the brush tool so firstly we want to create a layer mask so we make sure we've got our background layer selected and we want to go down and just create the layer mask which is found in the bottom right hand corner. So we'll go ahead and select it like so. And as you can see, a white square appears on the right hand side and that is our layer mask. So again, if you paint black onto this layer mask, it will reveal uh, the background or it will remove the background and create transparent pixels. So what we're gonna do is go ahead to select our brush tool, which is B on our keyboard, or you can always find it on the left-hand side tools palette. We'll go ahead and select it like so. And as you can see, our brush tool has been selected. So what we can do is zoom in and just start painting away the area that you want to remove, like so. So as you, I want to remove the background, so I'm just going to remove this section here. And again, you can just simply uh, create a smaller brush just to remove that area like so. So I'm gonna go along like so here to go down and then I'm going to go along like so lovely so I've gone around the edge and then what I'm probably going to do is just go through and just try and delete the rest of the area here again you can always make the brush larger uh, to cover a larger area but again you can always make it smaller if you're doing more detailed spots 
for instance around hair or anything like that. Lovely, so as you can see I've removed that section, but to double check the work that I've done, what we can do is create a solid color adjustment layer and use a complementary color just to check our work. So what we can do is we can just go back into our layers panel. We want to go down all the way to the bottom to our adjustment layers. You want to click and you want to go up to where you can see it says solid color, which is found right at the top. And you want to choose a fairly bright color. So today I'm probably just gonna choose a bright red. Now as you can see, it's covering the photo. So all we need to do is just simply drop this below the layer. And as you can see, we can see the area that we've removed. And what we can do is we can check to make sure that we are completely happy with the tool. So what we can see is we can see we've missed a little bit area. So again, we can select the brush tool by going over to our left-hand side tools panel. And we can just go in and just remove areas that you feel that you need to be tidied up a little bit. And it's a good way of just double checking uh, kind of what kind of cutouts that you've used. So we'll go in and we'll just create, find there's a little bit of fringing around the girl's jumper so we can just cut in ever so slightly. Lovely. So I am really, really happy with the result. And all you'll need to do is just do this for the rest of the photo and that will, uh, will work perfectly for most photos using the brush tool. But what you can also do is to create a customizable brush to do certain other areas like for instance hair. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and I just won't save that. We'll open up a PSD that I've already created a cutout. Now, as you can see, we've already got a layer mask and we've got a background selected. So I'm going to select white. But as you can see, the coat just doesn't look realistic. And there's a really handy uh, few tools or brushes that I've made that allow you to create a really realistic hair in Photoshop. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead, you can import them or you can always download them for free. The link will be in the description and they're called Fever Fur Brushes. So what we'll do is we'll go to our brush tool. You can always find it in the windows and you want to go down to where you can see it says brushes, click. And as you can see, it opens up with this preset and then you'll be able to import them from here. So you can go to the three icons up here and then all you need to do is just click import brushes. And depending on if you can buy other brushes, for instance, uh, I know there's quite a few on Etsy that you'll be able to download, but the ones that I've got available are for free. So once you've downloaded them, they're called Fever Fur Brushes. They're downloaded into three different. So you've got fine hair, you've got regular fur and thick fur. Now I find thick fur works best for like coats and animals, but again, it's all come up customizable depending on what uh, kind of what you're cutting out. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and select the brush tool and all you'll need to do is make the brush a little bit larger and you'll just need to use the brush tool like you would do the regular tool and you'll just simply need to just go over the hair and as you can see it creates this really realistic and kind of gradient way of creating nice smooth hair. So as you can see we're going along here and we can go along here and go basically all the way round, just removing that hard edge and creating this kind of hair gradient tool in Photoshop. And it's a really handy and customizable way of creating different types of brushes. And you can do this for all types of brushes in Photoshop. So we'll go down and go along all the way here. And again, because it's a layer mask, we can always go back over it in case you ever make a mistake. So lovely, I'm really happy with how that's looking. So if you zoom out, and then all you need to do is just probably change the background to black. As you can see, it's created this really nice, realistic hair cutout. So that is another way of using brushes in Photoshop to create a customizable cutout. So the next tool I'm going to be talking about is using the quick selection tool. So the quick selection tool is a really handy tool built into Photoshop and it allows you to create quick selections really easily. So what we're gonna do is open up a new photo. Again, I got these photos from Unsplash and the link will be in the description and this will be called Photo 3. So what we want to do today is again, just select the model and just delete the background. But today we're gonna to be using the quick selection tool instead of the brush tool. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead over to um, our tools panel here and it will be the third one down and it will be called the quick selection tool. Now, if you click and hold, as you can see, we've got the object selection, quick selection and magic wand and I'll go through all of these independently. 
So firstly, the quick selection tool is like very similar to the brush. So what we'll do is we'll make it ever so slightly larger. And what you can do is it will find kind of uh, the contrast edges within a photo, which is perfect for this particular type of photo. And there's a large contrast between the fairly white background and the dark model and the dark hair. So what we'll do is we'll just click and hold and as you can see it will automatically find the edges of um, or the contrast edges of a photo and it will automatically select them for us. So what we'll do is we'll go down and we'll go across where you can see her arm and then again we'll go down like so um, and we'll go down. Now as you can see it's, it's already selected this very large area here and we don't necessarily want that. So what we can do is if you hold down alt on your keyboard a little minus button will appear but you can also change this in your tools panel at the top. So we'll go and select the minus one and what this will do instead of adding in a selection it will remove the selection for us. So as you can see it's removing the selection around here. So as you can see if we go up just remove the section of the hair now this is a very quick way of creating selections and it's not 100% accurate. So just bear that in mind if you are thinking about creating a beautiful kind of cutout. This particular tool is hence the name Quick Selection. It's just designed for quick cutouts. And I often use this just to test if a photo in a composition will work. So what we'll do is we'll just finish off this selection like so. We'll just go up to make sure that we're completely happy. I feel like I'm this particular cutout works really nicely. So again, go around, and again, it's perfect because this particular image has got lots of contrast edges. If a photo that you're working with uh, doesn't have a lot of contrast edges and it's quite muted, this particular tool might not work very well. So what we'll do is we'll go along like so. Right, so once you're completely happy with the selection, again, this is where we want to create a layer mask. So we can go over and create a layer mask just simply by clicking. And because we've got a selection already kind of selected, it will create a layer mask from that selection. So we'll go ahead and just create a layer mask. And as you can see, it has completely deleted the background and it has kept the model. But as you can see, it's a very rough cutout and it's not 100% perfect. So do bear that in mind. This is a, a kind of a quick tool that you can use uh, within Photoshop to allow you to kind of test photos to see if they work. For instance, in a composition, if you're applying lots and lots of photos together and you don't want to spend ages cutting a, a particular photo out, this will allow you to kind of just quite a quick selection just to um, kind of uh, work out a way of seeing if the photo works. So that is the quick selection tool. But the object selection tool is a new tool in, 20, uh, in Photoshop 2020. So if you're working in 2019, 18, this tool won't be available. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete that layer mask. The object selection tool, so if you go ahead, click and hold, as you can see, the object selection tool is very similar to the quick selection tool, but it will use Photoshop's um, artificial intelligence technology to work out areas that you would like to select. So what you can do is you would just click and hold and it will drag into a square. What you want to do is the square wants to incorporate the entire area that you'd like selected. And then all you need to do is release and Photoshop again, very similar to the quick selection tool, will work out the contrast edges and create a selection from that. And as you can see, it's worked a lot better than the quick selection tool. So again, all you'll need to do is once you've created the selection, you'll just need to go and down, create the layer mask. As you can see, it's deleted the background, which is perfect. So there are the two ways of creating using either the object selection or the quick selection. Now, uh, using the magic wand, which is again, very similar to these tools, is similar, but it's not completely the same. So again, I'll delete that layer mask. Now, the uh, magic wand works perfect, for instance, if you were maybe shooting in a studio where the background is completely of the same color. So for instance, this particular uh, photo was obviously shot in a studio with a kind of matte gray kind of background. And the background is a fairly consistent color. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead over to our magic wand by clicking and holding on the object selection tool and going down to the magic wand. Now the magic wand uh, creates a selection by uh, finding pixels of similar color and then creating a selection from that. So what we do is we just zoom in. What you want to do is just select an area that you want to uh, remove. So we'll click, and as you can see, it's created this selection of colors that are similar. And you can change the tolerance value up here. So a 1% tolerance is a very, very uh, 
shallow tolerance, so it won't allow for large color variations. So let's say you have a fairly white background, but it kind of disappears into a very slight gray. It will kind of be very, very particular of what pixels it chooses. And if you choose, for instance, a, a tolerance of 100, there it will have a very large amount of colors in the spectrum it will select. So again, you'll just need to change the tolerance depending on what photo you're working with. But for this particular photo, I think a tolerance 10 will work perfectly. So as you can see, it's created this selection here. All you'll need to do is just click over again and it will select new areas for the photo. Now, as you can see, it has bled over into the subject. So again, all you'll need to do is hold down the Alt button. And as you can see, it will reverse that selection here, uh, like so. Uh, so all you'll need to do is click now again, because it's selected that area here, what we'll probably need to do is just turn the tolerance down to probably five, and then we'll click again. No, so we'll probably have to turn it to, uh, let's say two, click again, and as you can see, it's worked there. So it goes right up to the edge. So what we'll do is we'll keep on clicking like so. So click until you are completely happy with the cutout. So I think I'm fairly happy clicking around. Brilliant, so once you're happy with the cutout, again, all you'll need to do is simply by creating a layer mask. Now, as you can see, because we've selected the background, it has uh, kind of selected the background instead of selecting the model. So the way to fix this is just simply by pressing Command I, and that will reverse the colors. So it will change black from white to white to black. So again, it will just reverse the layer mask for us. So instead of selecting the background, it's now selected the model. And as you can see, it's created a, a, a lot more uh, realistic kind of cutout instead of using the quick selection tool. But again, this was a little bit more time consuming. So again, if you're either on a budget or you just wanted to kind of test it out, I'd probably use either the quick selection tool or using the object selection tool instead of using the magic wand. But it is there for you to use if you want to. So there are the three different um, tools using the quick selection tool. The next tool I'm going to be talking about is the refine edge tool. And this tool is one of my favorites. So the refine edge tool is probably one of my favorite ways of creating cutouts because it's quick, easy to use and create a really professional cutout. So I'm going to open up a new photo and this will be photo three in the link in the description. And again, I got this from unsplash.com. So what we want to do is I just want to create a cutout of this girl and just simply remove the background and maybe replace it with a different background. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to create a quick selection. So again, go to your quick selection tool or W on your keyboard, create a quick selection like so around the girl. So we'll do it like so, make sure we've got the arm and we've got the rest of our, uh, rest of our hair, Ruff, lovely. So instead of creating a uh, layer mask from this stage, we're going to you go into the select and mask tool. So what we're gonna do is gonna go right to the top and as you can see, it says select a mask and we'll go ahead and click. Now when it opens that, as you can see, it opens up a new dialog box and on the left hand side, you've got a bunch of new tools and the tool that we want to be selecting today is the second from top and it's called the refine edge tool or it's R on your keyboard. Now this is very similar if you've ever used the brush tool before. What you'll do is it kind of says it does what it on the tin basically. Uh, you can paint over certain areas where you'd like the computer to refine the edge. And this works perfectly for hair or any kind of detailed, maybe if you're cutting out the, the Golden Gate Bridge, for example, with all those very fine strands. What you can do is it will just refine the edge and it will kind of uh, remove any areas that the computer deems is, is either wrong or it will create a smooth cutout. So what we'll do is we'll just zoom down so as you can see the hair. Now this would be really difficult if you were using the brush tool, but with the quick selection tool, all you'll need to do is make the brush slightly larger. And what you'll need to do is click and hold and just go over the area that you'd like the computer to kind of re-look at the cutout. So what I'm gonna do is go over this uh, kind of section here. And what it'll do is it will use kind of um, the contrast between the background and the hair and create a cutout. And what it'll do is the red will just show all the areas that the computer will be removing in the final version. So as you can see, we've got this hair here. All you'll need to do is just go over that area again. And as you can see, it's created this really good looking cutout. So as you do, we'll go over this area a bit more, go all the way around the hair. Now this particular tool works really well with hair. And I would say 99% of the time that I'm using Photoshop, and if I ever need to cut out hair, I would be probably using the uh, quick selection tool with the refine edge tool. So we'll go ahead and just go around the edge of the hair here. 
Now again, you can go over the area as many times as you like until you are completely happy with the result. Now if you're finding the background color is a little bit too strong, all you'll need to do is go over to your properties panel and you can go ahead and just choose a new color from the color picker tool. So for instance, if you wanted bright green, you can do that there. So we'll go ahead and just select around here. We'll go along here like so. And just re-look and Photoshop will kind of use its AI to kind of work out new areas where the, the, uh, the layer the cut, cut out didn't work perfectly. Lovely, so I think it's all worked quite nice around there. We'll zoom down and as you can see it's missed little bits of the kind of her top here, a towel I guess she's wearing. Lovely, so what we need to do is just zoom out and as you can see it's, it's created a really good cutout especially around the hair. Now again, you can always go into your properties panel and change a few effects, like for instance, add feathering, you can add smoothing, and you can also, what you can do is decontaminate colors. So for instance, if you're cutting out something uh, that's got a bunch of different colors, what it will do is it will decontaminate it by creating any color fringing, which is really handy, maybe against a blue sky and you're cutting out some mountains, for instance. So if you, I would always try and tick this, but if you do tick this, you'll be kind of affecting the image, so you'll have to create a new layer. So what we'll do is we'll tick that, and what you want to do is our output settings, you want to click new layer with layer mask. So instead of creating a new layer, and that will completely remove any of the pixels, by very similar to what I was talking about like using the eraser tool, you always want to try and use a layer mask if possible. So we'll go ahead and select new layer with layer mask, and then we'll go and press OK. And as you can see, what it'll do is it'll create a cutout. And if we zoom in, as you can see, it's created a perfect cutout, as you can see, of the girl with the new layer. So again, just to double check this, what we'll do is we'll just create a solid color adjustment layer underneath. So we'll go to our adjustment layers icon, go to our solid color, create a nice kind of bright color like orange, and we can actually check the colors behind it. And as you can see, it's created a really good cutout. And this is why I love the tool, because it just works almost all of the time and uh, it just creates a really good professional cutout that you can use uh, all of the time and it's just it's a really handy tool to, to, to know and to use. So there we go guys, so that is the Refine Edge tool. Next I'm going to be showing you the Lasso tool. So the Lasso tool is great if you're planning on wanting to create either a quick cutout or if you're cutting out something square in nature. So what we're gonna do is open up a new photo. Again, I got this photo from unsplash.com and it will be called Photo 4 in the link in the description. So it's just a photo of a window and what I want to do is cut out the window and like the trees in the background and place a new landscape there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our lasso tool, which is L on our keyboard. And if you click and hold, as you can see, we've got the lasso tool, the polygonal tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. Now the lasso tool is basically a really quick way of creating a cutout. So if you wanted to cut out one of the squares, all you do is click, drag, and as you can see, it creates this kind of uh, quick line behind it. And as you can see, it creates a selection from that. So if you go ahead and click the layer mask, as you can see, it's just created that layer. And again, you could press Command I to invert. And as you can see, it has created this cutout. And again, you could do it as many times as you like, and you can do it any shape you like. So for instance, if I just show you off in the background, if we create this kind of wobbly shape, and if we create that, as you can see, it's created that perfect layer, uh, created that perfect cutout there. So all you will need to do is again, just create the layer mask. And as you can see, it's created that shape. So it's good if you wanted to quickly go around, for instance, a subject, and you just wanted to see if it will work within your composition, you can use this tool to your advantage. But if you want to cut out something that's, for instance, square, then you can also use this tool by using the polygonal tool. Now, this is probably one of my favorite lasso techniques is by using the polygonal lasso tool. So we'll go ahead and just delete that layer mask so we can start fresh from a new photo. And what we want to do is just cut out each of the panels of this window. So we'll go ahead to our lasso tool, click and hold, and we want to go ahead and select the second one down, which is called the polygonal lasso tool. And this is very similar to the lasso tool, but it allows you to create square edges which is perfect if you're planning on cutting out maybe a selection of buildings, like for instance, a, a landscape buildings, like in the distance, and maybe a silhouette, or if you're cutting out something square, like for instance, some windows. So we'll go ahead and click over right there, and as you can see, it draws a perfect straight line. And again, all you need to do is, once you're happy where it goes, you click again, and again, it creates another line. So you do that all the way around, 
until you go back to the, the area that you've uh, returned to, so your start point. And then all you need to do is click. And again, it's created that layer mask. Now what we need to do is simply create uh, created that selection. So all you need to do is click to create a layer mask. And as you see, it's created that selection. So all you will need to do is again, press Command I on your uh, keyboard that will invert your selection. And all you need to do is simply by again, creating a new selection for each of the uh, square windows. So we'll head, go ahead like that. And then all you need to do is just create you can even use the brush tool if you like, just to remove that area there. So again, go ahead, lasso tool, uh, using the polygonal lasso tool, we'll click, 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 and then go back to the start. And again, use the brush tool to remove that selection. And again, we'll do it once more time. So we'll go ahead to our polygonal lasso tool. We'll click at the start, we'll click at the corner on the left, bottom right, top right, and then back to the start again. And again, that will finish the selection. So it allows you to create the selection and the marching ants will appear. And then again, you can either create a layer mask or just use the brush tool to remove that section on the layer mask. Lovely. So if we go ahead, press Command D to deselect that. As you can see, it has removed the background from the uh, window. So all you'll need to do is simply place a new photo in. So we'll place a photo like that and we can place that behind the uh, window and as you can see we've placed a new landscape in there. Now the magnetic lasso tool is something very different. The magnetic lasso tool is probably more similar to the quick selection tool and what it does is it uses the computer's uh, information and it works out edges using uh, the difference in light. So for instance the contrast between bright and dark. So we'll go ahead and just delete that layer mask and we'll start using the magnetic lasso tool. So we'll go ahead, click and hold, and we want to go to the magic lasso tool, which is found just here. Now the magic lasso tool finds an area and it will automatically draw it, but it will kind of follow the mouse. So if you kind of go around a selection, it will kind of follow it, but it will use the computer's technology to kind of work out where that should, where it should be fo uh, followed. So what we'll do is we'll click, and as you can see, if we draw a line, as you can see, it's automatically creating a line for where you can see the edge of the windows and it's creating a lot better because it's not the windows are obviously not completely straight so using the polygonal tool obviously it will create perfect straight edges but using the magnetic lasso tool allows you to kind of go around the contours of the the windows and allows you to kind of go around the kind of not complete sharp edges but kind of rounded edges so we'll go ahead and just follow it around like so and as you can see it's making mark points along the way and again, it's using the difference between brightness and darkness and using the kind of contrast between the kind of bright trees and the kind of dark background. So as you can see, it goes all the way. And then all we need to do to finish the selection, we'll just need to click. And again, as you can see, it has made that selection there. And that is how you use the three different types of lasso tools. Now, the last tool I'm going to be talking about is the pen tool. And this is probably the tool I'd probably recommend using the most, as it's probably the one of the most customizable ways of creating cutouts. So the last tool I'm going to be talking about is the pen tool. Now the pen tool is probably the best way of creating cutouts in Photoshop, but the only problem with the pen tool, it is sometimes quite time consuming. So for instance, you don't want to use this tool if you want to create a quick cutout. So what we're gonna do is open up last photo, which is photo four. And again, the link will be in the description. So what we want to do today is just use the pen tool to cut out this guy. Now this particular uh, photo will be perfect for the pen tool as it's got nice smooth edges throughout the entire frame. Now the pen tool won't necessarily work too well, for instance, with hair, but again, you can always use two, uh, two of the tools. So for instance, the pen tool and the brush tool in conjunction with each other to create the cutout. But today I'm just gonna show you how to use the pen tool. So what we're gonna do is we're going to zoom in and we're gonna have a starting point. So I think I'm gonna have the starting point, which is this section here. What we want to do is go over to the pen tool selection here, and we want to click to rate our start pen tool. Now you can always click away into the canvas, like so here, and then you can feed your way into the canvas. Right, so what we'll do is we'll click there like so. And then all you'll need to do is to create a pen tool, a line is to click again. But if you click and hold, what it will do is it'll create this Bezier curve. 
And this curve you can move around to depending on how you like it. So for instance, we'll go for something like so. But if you hold down the, um, if you've got the pen tool selected and you've got the, and you've clicked hold, if you hold down the space bar, you can actually move that pen anchor around. So if you've made a mistake, you can always, instead of reverting back by pressing command Z, you can always simply use the space bar to uh, just move around the anchor. So once you're happy with that, all you need to do is release. And as you can see, you've created a mark there. But again, all you need to do is just carry on, click and hold, and you can create a nice smooth curve like so. And again, click and hold all the way around. So all you need to do is move, keep on going all the way around the subject until you are happy with the cutout. Now, if you get to a sharp point, all you need to do is simply just click and what it will do is it will just finish off and the Bezier curve won't be added to the next. So for instance, if you reached a sharp point, like for instance, an angle, instead of creating a curve around the angle, you can just click to the point and it will allow you to go around and create sharp edges. So like so, for instance, here, as you can see, it finishes up. So we want to go straight up like so. Now I find zooming in quite close into the photo allows you to be a lot more precise with your pen tool. But again, it does depend on how long do you want to take with cutouts. I often find I spend quite a lot of time on doing the cutouts because it's the thing that uh, people predominantly see if you ever do make a mistake. And if you, especially if you're creating quite a large composite, you don't want to have lots of mistakes in it. You want it to be as, as best as possible. So I find zooming in allows you to be a lot more precise with where you place the uh, anchor tool. So what we'll do is we'll go along all the way around this particular photo. Now, of course you can always zoom out, but I find again, zooming in allows you to be a lot more precise, especially on a photo like this, where the cutouts are so contrast between the very bright background and the very dark kind of foreground or the subject. So what we'll do is we'll go around like so. And then all we need to do is go around the person's coat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly speed through this just so we get to the end. Right guys, so I've almost got to the end. So all I need to do is just remember if you wanna click and hold and it will bring up the Bezier curve. But if you don't click and hold, you'll allow you to create this nice sharp edge. Now, if you've created a Bezier curve and you want to go from a curve into something that's straight, all you'll need to do is Alt click on that anchor point and the actual Bezier curve will disappear, allowing you to go from a curve into a straight point. I thought I'd mention that just before I finish creating this cutout. So what we'll do is go along the edge here, all the way along until we get to the finish point here. Lovely. So all you need to do is just join it back up to the start point, which is over here. And all you need to do just to finish it, you'll just need to do is click. Now, as you can see, it's created this tool, but as you can see, the selection hasn't appeared. So what we need to do is go into our pen paths tool to create a selection. So what we could do in our layers panel here, you can see it's split into layers, channels, and paths. Now, using the pen tool, what we've done is we've created a path, and we can find that path if we go ahead to our path tool, select it, and as you can see, it's broken into a new layer. And at the moment, it's just called work path because it's the path that we're currently working on. To save this path, all you'll need to do is just double click. And as you can see, we're allowing it to save it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call this particular one test one, just so we know what one we're working with. And we'll go and press okay. And what that's done, so if we go ahead and just click off this, as you can see, the it's disappeared. But if we ever want to go back to it, all we need to do is just click on test one. And as you can see, it's reactivated the path that we've just deselected. But now what we need to do is turn this into a selection. And we can do this by what we do, press command on your uh, keyboard and then clicking. And that will convert it from a path into a selection, which is, as you can see, it turns on the marching ants. So all we need to do is just go back to our layers panel, and all you need to do is simply create a layer mask. But I find a handy trick, especially when using the pen tool, is by adding an ever so slight blur to this particular selection. And we can do this by going, by creating a select and blur layer. So what we're gonna do is go to select, we're gonna go to modify, and this will allow you to modify the selection whilst the selection is activated. So we'll go to modify, and then we want to go to the very bottom one, which is called feather. 
and this will feather the edge ever so slightly because no particular photo has a 100% sharp edge and most photos will have a minimum of a one pixel feather and this is what creates this kind of realistic look when you're creating cutouts. So we've done that, what we'll do is we'll just add a one pixel feather and we'll go and press OK. So now what it's done is it's created that selection and it's added a one pixel feather consistently throughout the entire selection. So now if you go and press layer mask, as you can see, if we zoom in, it's created this ever so slight feather, which adds a sense of realism to the cutout. So now if we place a different photo behind, such as this background photo, we make it as large as possible. And then we'll just place that behind as you can see, this photo doesn't look out of place. Obviously, the colors are a little bit off, and that's something that you would have to change using color grading and using your color lookup layers, but I would say the cutout looks perfect. So that is how you use the cutout tool. Next, I'm going to show you how you can use the cutout tool and the refine edge tool to create the perfect cutout. So now we've learned the basics of the four main tools you use to create cutouts. Now I'm going to show you how you can use these tools in conjunction with each other to create the perfect cutout. So what I've done is I've chosen uh, this photo, which is photo five, and it'll be the last photo in the description. And again, I got this photo from unsplash.com and no particular tool is gonna to be able to create the perfect cutout. And you're gonna to have to use in conjunction with different tools to create a cutout that looks realistic. So what we do is zoom in and as you can see, it's a model with a dark kind of um, dress with a dark background. So for instance, the computer isn't going to be able to determine a selection simply by using the quick selection tool because of there's no contrast. But as you can see, we've moved up to the hair and as you can see, the hair here is quite difficult. So we're gonna to have to use a different tool for that. And then we've got nice smooth cutouts here, which will probably be a different tool altogether. So we're gonna to have to use a multitude of tools in this particular photo to create the perfect cutout. So the first tool I think I'm going to be using is we're gonna try the quick selection tool and see if it works. So we're gonna go ahead to our quick selection tool here and I think we'll try the object selection tool first. So we'll go click, drag over the area and see if that works. And as you can see, it is done the hair around here where there's a higher contrast between the background and the foreground. But as you can see, it hasn't worked down here very well. So what we'll do is we'll press Command D and we're not gonna have to end up using the quick selection tool. So the tool we're probably gonna have to end up using is using the pen tool for the overall cutout. And then I think we're probably gonna use the refine edge tool for the areas that we need to refine, such as the hair and maybe around the hand. So we'll go ahead and select the pen tool using P on our keyboard, or you can always go ahead and select it on the left-hand side tools panel. And what we need to do is work, roughly work out an area. Now you can always go and create a curves adjustment layer and just brighten up the area to see if you can see if there's any kind of edge. But I don't think the particular photo has that edge available. So what we're gonna to have to do is kind of use our intuition and kind of make it up as we go along. So I'm going to start here and I'm gonna head my way up like so and kind of go up like here. Now I'm not gonna try and cut out the hair using the pen tool because I think that will take too long. So I'm gonna make a rough cutout like I would do using the polygonal lasso tool and we're going to kind of go over it using the refine edge tool. So I'm gonna go over it quite quickly like so. And we'll just use straight edges. But now again, as we go back into going around the nose, because it has a high contrast, we can use the pen tool to our advantage to create this nice smooth cutout. So again, remember guys to how to use the pen tool. You click, hold, and it'll bring up the Bezier curve. And I'll show you what will happen if we get to the edge here. So we're gonna go all the way up. And as you can see, we'll click, and it'll prevent that Bezier curve from appearing. So then what we can do is just simply click again. And as you can see, that's how you can create this nice sharp angle. So again, we'll go around the edge here, zooming in if needed to be more precise using the pen tool. And we're just going to go around this selection. Now, just to speed this up, I'm just going to create a speed edit of this.
Lovely, so I've just finished the tool, so all you'll need to do is just go back to our start point and we'll just need to click. And that will completely finish the using the pen tool. So if we zoom out, all we'll need to do is save the pen tool in our paths and then we just need to create a selection from that. But as you can see, if we zoom in, we are actually missing a section of the hand. So I'm going to show you how you can create a selection within a selection. So if we go up to our paths tool, as you can see, if you go all the way, we've got this square within a square. So what we want to do, the one that we want to have selected, and it's the one that I always have selected in Photoshop, so you probably can save this as your default, is exclude overlapping shapes. So if shapes overlap, what it will do is it will miss that section in the middle. So because we're overlapping two uh, paths to create this selection, what it will do is it will create a invert of that particular selection. So if I, I'll show you how that makes sense. So make sure you've got exclude overlapping selections uh, there. So what we'll do is we'll just create this new path tool here. Again, if you want to finish off the path tool, just remember clicking Alt and clicking on that Bezier anchor. And all it will do is it will delete that Bezier curve history so you can create a nice sharp edge. So as we go, we've created a selection within a selection. But as you can see, it's staved within the path tool. So we'll go ahead to our paths. We'll go ahead to our work path, double click to save. So I'm just going to call this one girl one. And we'll go and press OK. So now that selection is saved. So if we go ahead and click off, we can always go back and we can have it selected there. Now remember to turn it into a selection, command click on the thumbnail. And as you can see, the marching, as, marching ants has appeared and it's turned it from a path into a selection. So we'll go back to our layers panel and all we will need to do now is simply just create a layer mask. But if you remember, we're going to try and cut out the hair using uh, the refine edge tool. So now we've got the selection appeared. All we'll need to do is go to our quick selection tool. It will bring up our selector mask or if you can always go up to select and you can go to select subject or focus area. And what we will need to do is just bring up selector mask settings, which is the one that we found here. Now what we want to do is just go over the areas using the refine edge tool to cut out the hair. So what we're going to do is go up to the, let's say the top of the hair here, and we're going to paint where we would like the computer to redefine the edge. So what we need to do is just go round, and what we want to do is do it as nice and smooth as possible all the way round. So as you can see, the computer is re-looking at the area that you've highlighted and the computer's going to say, oh yeah, I think this is hair or yes, I think this is uh, uh, the background and it will add or delete this section for you. And it's a really handy way, especially if you've used it in conjunction with the pen tool. And this is the kind of way that I create cutouts in Photoshop. So what we'll do is we'll go around here and we'll go around here. And we'll just add in little bits of hairs that the computer missed the first time around. And as you can see, it's created this nice, smooth cutout. Now, again, what I want to do, because obviously there's a bright blonde hair versus the background, we want to decontaminate the colors. So what we're going to do is click the decontaminate colors icon, and we want to go to output settings. We want to make sure we've got the new layer with layer mask. So we'll go ahead and have that selected there. And all we will need to do is simply press OK. And as you can see, it's created the layer mask there. So to, just to test the layer mask, again guys, all we need to do is simply place a solid color adjustment layer behind. So we'll go ahead and click and go all the way to solid color adjustment layers in our adjustment layers icon found in the bottom left hand corner. Choose a nice bright color and simply drop that below that layer. And as you can see, it's created this really good cutout round here, but it hasn't worked too well at the top. So this is where, again, we're going to be now using the brush tool to just finish off the cutout. So we're going to go to our layer mask, which is our layer mask background copy right at the top. We're going to go to our brush tool found on our left hand side tools panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a nice smooth, small brush. We're just going to remove this kind of haziness that's found at the top of the hair, which doesn't look very realistic. So we're going to be using the brush tool just around the edge here. And we'll just use it to finish off this particular effect. Lovely. And again, just to invert it, all you'll need to do is make sure we've got white as our foreground color instead of black, and that will add to the layer mask. So we'll add, re-add in the, the transparent pixels that were recently hidden. And again, that is the advantage of using a layer mask over using, for instance, I don't know, the eraser tool. 
We'll just go around, just smartening the edge of the hair up. And again, you can always drop between foreground and background color by pressing X on your keyboard. So we'll go around like so. Lovely, and as you can see, it's created this really nice smooth cutout around the edge. Lovely. So that is how you can use the pen tool, the quick selection tool and the refine edge tool and the brush tool to create the perfect cutout in Photoshop. And just to test it, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna place a nice background behind. So we'll place a background like so. And then what we're gonna do is just simply drop that below our cutout layer. And then now we can move the cutout layer around to our choice. And then we can make it a little bit smaller and there we go. And that is a composite image of both the foreground and background photo. And again, we use the pen tool, we use the quick selection tool and the refine edge tool. And we also use the brush tool just to finish off the selection. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So that is my masterclass tutorial on how to create perfect cutouts. And again, the four tools that we used in this tutorial is the quick selection tool, we looked at the Refine Edge tool, we looked at the Brush tool, and we looked at the Pen tool, including the Lasso tool. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest content. But until next time, guys, keep creating.